All right, guys, if you're this far in and you've already seen me do this at least once before, but um, in putting these things back in here, this is the uh, spring plate, torsion bar is right there. Uh, I've done an alignment mark here and there's another one right there inside the torsion bar. See if you can see it a bit better there. Right there. So I've sprayed everything down with white lithium grease. Um, it helps the rubber bushings not break down so quickly from what I've read. Um, so I've gone here for two notches. So that's two teeth actually on, on here, um, which when you uh, to extend that over the length of this, what is it, 20 inch arm or 18 inch arm, whatever it is, translates into four inches of drop, which is pretty significant. So I'm hoping it's not too much. I can always pull the stuff off. What I've done on the other side here, I'll just stick you over there real quick. Ugh. By the way, those of you who don't know, I recently just had a 53rd birthday, so I'm feeling it. Um, okay, you'll see from this side here where we're at. So what you do is you temporarily fasten this thing in. We'll put it back on the ground um, and see if we're happy with the ride height, see if it's consistent. Again, I did have some alignment issues, uh, or sorry, clocking issues with the torsion bars, um, and I eyeballed one. <laughs> so who knows if that's gonna work or not. Anyways, uh, that's where we're at. So I'm gonna finish buttoning up the other side. We'll do a quick uh, drop of the car just to see how it looks. Oh, excuse me. And then uh, we'll know from there if we want to go a little higher or if we want to drop the front or what it is we're, we're going to actually do with this thing. Okay, so I got the side buttoned up. This is the driver's side. Um, I had to reuse these old uh, bolts. Um, for some reason, they, uh, well, obviously for what reason, they use a 15 millimeter head on, on these, which just fits in this well right here. Uh, so when you put a socket on it, it exactly fits. Um, if you go with larger, newer bolts, they have a 17 millimeter head on them, which doesn't really work. It basically means you have to hammer it on and it just basically makes a mess of this. That happened over here. I, I stuck it on there as it pulled in. Um, it started making a mess of this, so I just pulled it out. So the screws were fine. I just cleaned up the threads and tied them up a little bit uh, before um, putting them back in. So that's what it looks like on the inside. So right, there we go. We got three bolts holding this thing on. Each of these bolt holes is elongated. Like this one is up here, you'll see. Um, which means this whole assembly here, the swing arm, can swoop backwards or forwards on the spring plate. Um, and that's how we get our rear alignment. So if it's forward, that can contribute to something called toe-in, where the front of the tires kind of leans towards the middle of the vehicle. Um, or they have, they'll have toe-out, which means it, they sort of go away from the vehicle, meaning the back of the tire is newer than the front. Uh, in relation to the al alignment of the car. Um, back here, we're gonna end up with something called negative camber. And negative camber means that this whole brake assembly is gonna actually wanna curve slightly upwards. Not very much, but when we accelerate or under shock compression, it's gonna have negative camber. Positive camber is where the tires point to the bottom. So when they come around, they go like this way rather than that way. So, um, Negative camber is preferred. You'll probably see it in lots of sports cars with tires at the top kind of bend into the wheel wells uh, versus being at the bottom. So I'll just button this up and eyeball it, get it real close. I'll find a couple of um, consistent areas on the car and just measure back and get it within a 16th of an inch. And again, once we get it to the alignment shop, we'll, we'll have a better idea as to where the car's sitting. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to episode number four of the four video build. We are not done yet, so I'm sorry to disappoint, but we are gonna be into probably a fifth or sixth video uh, before this thing's done. So in the last, in the time since the last video, uh, I've got the back end pulled apart twice uh, to get it to the right ride height that I wanted. Um, I have a few videos on that. It's been done before. There's about a thousand videos online as to how to do it. I'm not that concerned with showing everyone how to do it but there was a little indexing problem that I had to get my head around and 
Of course, putting all new rubber in there, it doesn't all fit together that easily. There's a lot of farting around, has to go with it. So anyways, that's all done. There's all new bushings in there, so it's gonna ride a little bit nicer anyways. Um, the ride height is, I think is perfect right now. The front end uh, originally had the, the beam from the 61 in it, which we took out because uh, it was too wide. Uh, when you lower these cars, they look kind of funny. The uh, the track is different. I think I mentioned that in the last video. Anyways, with the two inch narrow beam, it's just about perfect. I I mean, I wouldn't have it any other way. There is a narrower version, like a four inch narrow beam, but that's the wheels are way too set in for me. I, I don't care if I look and either does Bill. So we just opted for this look here. So that's the finished look there. Um, what else, what else, what else? Oh, I got uh, the bumper installed on the back here. It's gonna walk backwards. Hopefully I don't trip on anything here. Walking, walking, walking. Uh, yeah, so the back bumper's on, looks great. Uh, Bill did a great job of restoring it. It had uh, a bunch of pits and things on it, but uh, a little spider webbing done in, in, um, in the chrome, but it looks really good now. So there's not much hold up bumper on actually. 1965, both these cars are 65s. Um, and they both have little tiny bolts holding them on. Those bolts on the Beetle, I believe, are M8s and they're 20 millimeters long. Um, that's not very thick. It's thinner than, than a pencil um, and about the length of a 25 cent piece. So there's not much holding them on, there's four. So there you go, there's your crash protection 1965. This guy here isn't much better. Uh, what else? Um, so the fuel tank went in today. Um, I got a fuel filter that's going to go in line between the engine here and there's a space in front of that that's uh, right where the transmission is. I'm going to put it in there. It's serviceable. Uh, it's out of the heat. These cars have a really bad habit of getting really hot uh, and then the fuel filters catch on fire and then you end up with, uh, with a, a burning beetle and we don't want that. So it's going to go in there. It's down line of the fuel pump but it's before the carburetors, which is what you want when you're running carburetors. They're very finicky with dirty fuel. Uh, what else? The sway bar is partially installed. I, I need some parts. Um, this is a 61 component in the front on a 65 car. And the sway bar didn't come into effect until 1961. So 1960 was the last year of no sway bar which means when the car handles, it really does lean over. I mean, this is never gonna be a, a great handling car anyways, but the sway bar does definitely improve that handling and the, uh, and the ability to, to corner with a flatter car. So uh, the 19 mil sway bar is the upgrade from what we originally had, which was, I think is about 10 mil, it's pretty small. Uh, and it was the first iteration of the sway bar for the, for the Beatles. So hopefully that'll keep the front end nice and flat uh, when Bill's racing around with his 125 horsepower motor and all this beautiful handling suspension and everything else. So that's where we're at right now. So I appreciate you guys tuning back in. I'm looking forward to semi-regular content. Um, I know it's been sporadic up until this point, these last four videos, but I'm enjoying getting back in the garage and doing what I love to do, which is, which is wrenching on, on junk and, and painting things and that. Not bodies, but painting, suspension, and welding, and all that kind of crap. So, anyway, that's what I'm up to. Um, it's number four of maybe five or six videos. Tomorrow, I plan to get the rest of the wiring done. Um, I'm gonna power up the fuel pump to see if it works, and I'm gonna move fuel from the front to the back, and if I can get that done, then we're good to fire this thing up. That would be great. And then I gotta go from front to back, go over every single nut and bolt that I've touched, tighten them up to torque specs, and then I'm gonna put some paint on them just to let me know that they've been they've been done um, and we don't have to worry about it. And then a good friend of mine, uh, Todd from Lowriders, has offered his alignment machine up to uh, me to do a full four wheel alignment in this thing. I've never done one of those before, but the plan is to go there and take part in it and see what's involved in a four wheel laser alignment job. Apparently beetles are very difficult to align. I don't know how, but that's what I'm told. So we'll, uh, we'll get it about as good as we can get it with, uh, with that laser set up there on, on, uh, on his jig. Um, and depending on how that goes, I'll do my Mustang and probably do that thing at some point too. So anyways, thanks for tuning in guys. We will see you for episode number five.